You know how it is when you've been living in an underground vault and then Reclamation Day comes along and it's time to leave, but instead of planning on how you're going to explore the Appalachian wasteland, you've accidentally spent the last 25 years playing Nuka Tapper. Ah, damn it! Alright, I guess I'll head out into the radioactive wasteland then. Unless I can get 25 more years? No? Okay. Don't worry though, there's plenty to see, do, and be terrifyingly chased by out there in West Virginia, as you'll discover in this handy tourist guide to some of the region's most intriguing sites. In this video, brought to you by Outside Xbox and sponsor, Fallout 76. Let's go! During this self-guided tour, you'll experience majestic natural formations that evoke an otherworldly sense of awe and reverence. We all love caves, right? They're damp, cold, dark full of unknowable horrors. Wait, why do people love caves? Oh, that's right, it's because they're a natural wonder full of geological splendor. And a prime example of such splendor is the Uncanny Caverns, a West Virginian tourist attraction you can find on your travels in Fallout 76. The impressive stalactite and stalagmite to your left, known as the trident, will one day come together to form a massive natural column. But it's not all just stalactites and stalagmites to discover down there. There's also the spooky tale of the Night Kid. You'll also hear tales of the dark and mysterious Night Kid who leapt from the depths of these caverns into the imaginations of millions worldwide. A weird bat-slash-boy hybrid who, it seems, lived down in the uncanny caverns, drinking the abundant fresh water and surviving off insects before apparently having some kind of violent standoff with the cops. He remained in captivity for a decade before he was freed under mysterious circumstances and returned to the caverns where he lives to this day. Man, Night Kid sounds awesome! The spooky mystery of Night Kid is spoiled slightly by the fact that he likely doesn't exist, and the caves are now actually full of cryptozoological mole people and patrolled by winged scorch beasts that you don't even need to pay the entrance fee to see. Still, might want to get inside though just to be out of the firing line. Also, you can visit the gift shop featuring such classic Night Kid souvenirs as a teapot shaped like a house and anti-addiction medicine. And don't forget to take a photo for a treasured memory that will last for the rest of your life. Which will be about 90 seconds, because seriously this place is crawling with mole people with missile launchers. always in style. If you're after something a little bit more upmarket, look no further than the swanky White Spring Resort. I mean, just look at how green and lush they've managed to keep their golf course in a post-nuclear hellscape. Now that's dedication. The White Spring was founded in the 1800s, but hit a rocky financial patch just before the Great Nuclear War that wiped out the need for any kind of currency that wasn't the cap of a drinks bottle. As a result, they replaced almost all of their staff with robots, which was great for saving on wages, less so for creating a peaceful resort atmosphere that isn't full of clanking ambulatory machinery. Serve and protect. However, the service is still first rate and the many robots will do anything they can to help you out, from staffing the resort's many shops, to running its luxurious spa facilities, to helping you fight troublesome Grafton monsters that have wandered onto the property. No request is too large or too small. The White Spring is also home to a secret nuclear bunker that was meant to house Congress in the event of a war. It's possible that it worked, we can't tell, because this thing is locked down tighter than Fort Knox. Maybe you'll find a way inside, but here's a tip. Try not to aggro the robots on your way in. Bad idea. Located high in the West Virginian hills, the Palace of the Winding Path is a temple dedicated both to guided meditation and to people taking lots and lots of drugs. It's worth a visit just for the incredibly ornate architecture you'll find, both inside and outside, and would be a lovely place to do a bit of peaceful meditation if it weren't for the fact that it's now swarming with Scorched who are quite keen on shooting you. Clear them out though and you can explore at your leisure. 
Then you can discover for yourself how the order who once lived here helps people achieve higher states of consciousness. They achieve this through mindfulness, breathing exercises, and burning braziers full of what they called spiritual incense and what we call hallucinogenic drugs, spreading the smoke throughout the building and surrounding area. <coughs> Cheers, guys. Since the war, it's been harder to get the drugs required to provide seekers with enlightenment. But don't worry, these guys are resourceful, and apparently you can get almost the same effect with ingredients you can find throughout Appalachia, such as brain stimulants and fiberglass dust. Maybe give it a go if you're in the area, although with the freaky stuff I see on a standard walk through Fallout 76, I hardly need to add hallucinations to the mix. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that there's something not quite right about this space station that you can come across in the north part of the Fallout 76 map. Namely, the fact that it's lying here on the ground in several pieces in West Virginia, rather than up in space in one piece in geosynchronous orbit. Seems sub-optimal for a space station. Anyway, it seems this particular space station crashed down to Earth for unspecified reasons, possibly recently, judging by how much smoke and steam it's putting out, although all the scientists' skeletons lying around tell a different story. Most of the space station is inaccessible, although find the right scientist skeleton and you can find a code to open one of the airlocks, inside which you can find THE outfit to be seen wandering the wasteland in this season, a spacesuit. While this does have the benefit of protecting you from airborne diseases, I think we can all agree that style is the real winner here, and it goes with everything! So yes, it is a tragedy that this space station fell out of space, losing all its research, killing everyone on board, and probably a good number of people on the ground too. But on the plus side, I'm the best dressed person in Appalachia now, so swings and roundabouts. Inventing a new original character with animal powers is a really tough job because all the good animals are taken. Batman, Spider-Man, Catman. You have to go really far down the list to find an animal that hasn't had the suffix man attached to it and then sent off to have a fist fight with Thanos. That is, I assume, how we ended up with Mothman, the monster of West Virginian folklore whose shadow looms large over Fallout 76 and whose statue really decided to focus on the abs. Someone bring me the duct tape because this Mothman is ripped. Head into Point Pleasant, not too far from Vault 76, and you'll discover the Mothman Museum, a repository of key Mothman artifacts such as uh, his miner's lamp? Sure, it makes sense. He's a moth, they love a lamp. His dog tags? Was Mothman in the army? And of course, his trademark burned fashion magazine. He was never seen without that. Hey, at least we didn't pay to get in. And since there's no one here, we can ignore all the rules as well, like this one about no photographs. Hey, it's the post-apocalypse. Who's going to stop me? Though this place is a shrine to Mothman, what is even more of a shrine to Mothman is the actual shrine to Mothman that you can find opposite the museum. This is the work of the Cult of the Mothman, a group that worships Old Lamp Boy as evidenced by this bizarre setup with the drawings and the candles and the skeleton and the, ew, Mothman eggs. Mothmen can be spotted throughout Appalachia, but the rumour is that Mothman himself can be called to the wasteland if you can find a lamp big enough. Although, I mean, maybe don't do that? You've seen that guy's abs. He's going to talk about nothing but his workout routine and macros, I guarantee you. With all this running around the wasteland, getting shot at by robots and scorched and stumbling across Grafton monsters fighting honey beasts, sometimes you just want to take a break and there's no better place to do that than at a water park. Except of course for the fact that all water is now incredibly radioactive, which does put a slight downer on an experience that requires you to be submerged in water for a good 80% of the time you're there. Still, there's plenty of other stuff to do at Wavy Willards, Appalachia's premier alligator-themed amusement park. Only? There might be others. You don't know. For a start, there's the Crocolossus Mountain roller coaster, which sure isn't actually running at the moment due to nuclear difficulties, but is still available for you to run along the track, enjoying the whimsical sights of this fun alligator and only occasional horrible spike traps. 
What's even better is that you don't have to queue for anything. That's because all the previous park guests are either petrified corpses that'll crumble into radioactive ash the second you approach them, or scorched who can be encouraged to stay away from the best rise by simply shooting them until they stop moving. As in all good amusement parks, there's a series of employee-only tunnels under the park, and snooping around the terminals reveals that if you want to spend a bit more time here, there's an old missing child case that you can try and solve if you prefer detective work to water slides. Just steer clear of the place at night. Slight Mylurk infestation. I just got over my last case of fever claw. Top of the world is Appalachia's premier ski resort, and in the past was the perfect place to head during winter. Now it would be the perfect place to head during nuclear winter, were it not for the fact that it's all blowed up. The Top of the World Resort is so much more than just a burnt out gondola ski lift though. The huge rotunda at the top also contains a mezzanine level shopping mall, containing stores and restaurants that are the perfect way to unwind after a hard day on the slopes. Though these days the place is looking a little less apres ski and a little more Apre apocalypse. Beforehand though, it sounded like quite the place, offering combination skiing slash pheasant hunting trips, and an upcoming new run called Cutthroat Crag, which looks pirate themed in some way, which honestly, about time ski resorts. Another benefit to the top of the world is that it's also home to the Vendorbot Resin, a charming robo salesman. It's worth the hike up here just to experience his salt of the earth wisdom. You can't stab people unless you buy something to do the stabbing with. Can't argue with that, Resin. So wise. I like knowing that everything I sell spreads anarchy just a little further. Those are just some of the places you can visit when Fallout 76 hits on the 14th of November. Which one will you be visiting first? Have you discovered any other weirder places on your travels in the beta? Will we ever be welcome at the White Spring again? Doesn't look like it, but let us know about the other two in the comments below, and for more Fallout, check out this video from us, which is about the Fallout cults that dealt with the apocalypse so weirdly, or this video, which is about the worst things that Vault-Tec did in Fallout 4. Thanks for watching.